So our next talk is on VC package. So if you've never used VC package before or heard of it, it is a dependency or package manager for C++. Um, if you've used Conan, then it's something kind of similar to Conan. Um, you know, there's some differences in implementation, but it's it's a similar kind of idea, managing your dependencies without having to do it manually. And our speaker for this is Augustin, who is on my team in the Visual C++ team. Augustin, welcome. Hey, Sai, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. It's, uh, it's absolutely horrible here where I am in Scotland. I have like rain pattering on my window and it's cold and awful. I hope it's nicer in, in Seattle. Yeah, it's been nicer lately, um, but we do get our uh, usual seven to eight months of uh, rain during the year, so. Yeah, I, I always feel like, because I work with all of my team is in Redmond or Seattle and I'm in Scotland, although we're like, pretty much on different sides of the world. I feel that, like there's there's a connection there by just how much rain both Seattle and Scotland, and Scotland have. But yeah, thank you very much for joining us today and I'll hand it over to you. All right. Um, thank you everyone for uh, joining us for Pure Virtual C++ uh, once again this year. Um, so uh, what I will be talking to you about today is a VC package, which is the C and C++ uh, library manager tool that we have been working on. Uh, and specifically, I want to discuss some of the latest features that have been uh, developed over the past year and where we are with them. Um, and um, I've got a few uh, announcements to make as well. So let's uh, go ahead and get started. So uh, if you're not familiar with VC package, I will just do a, a quick uh, intro. Um, so. VC package, as I said, it, it's a library manager tool. Uh, another word I guess you could use is package manager. Um, and its purpose is essentially to make it really, really easy to acquire uh, C and C++ libraries. Um, now, in the past couple of years, uh, there has been an ISO C++ uh, developer survey that's been going out. And one of the questions there is essentially, what are your top pain points of C++? And if you look at, at the answers, uh, you will see there, there's a few uh, ones that you probably expect, things like uh, long build times, for example. But uh, consistently in the past few years, since the survey has uh, st uh, started asking that question, we've seen that uh, managing libraries has been consistently the number one issue in terms of, uh, like if you look at people who strongly agree with it being a problem that was always at the top. And this is a problem that has been going on for a very long time. VC package is designed to help solve that. So uh, as it stands today, VC package has over uh, 1600 uh, public libraries. These are like popular open source projects and also some of the smaller ones as well. I mean, it's a pretty large number uh, as you can see. Um, you can uh, install them for Windows, Mac OS and Linux, uh, assuming the libraries themselves actually support those platforms. Uh, the project itself is open source. You can find us on GitHub. Uh, you, we can feel free to fork it or add it as a Git submodule for your project or do whatever you want with it. Essentially, um, it's all out in the open. And we do get quite a lot of open source contributors as well. And we're very happy uh, uh, to receive their contributions and want to thank them for their uh, ongoing support for the project. We really wouldn't have been able to grow as fast as we have without their support. And the way it kind of works is uh, VC package is very CMake centric uh, in terms of things like uh, authoring uh, packages and getting uh, things working uh, behind the scenes. And it is written in C++ for C and C++ developers. And it is designed with both uh, working in a local development environment and continuous integration uh, in mind. So that's kind of a brief overview of uh, VC package. Um, and one one line I wanted to throw in here, um, our goal with VC package is really for it to be the simplest solution for CNC++ dependency management. There are lots of different solutions out there. Some of them are solutions that individual organizations may, may develop. Um, some of them are actual package managers. Some of them are system package managers. Um, but there's always some pros and cons to all the different options with system package managers for example, while they're system specific. Um, and you don't really have uh, the same level of flexibility as you might have with a language package manager like a VC package or Conan. Um, and with uh, 
the, some of the in-house solutions that uh, different people and organizations come up with, and you have to worry about maintaining them. Um, they're not always uh, open source, so it's uh, they don't get as many contributions. Uh, and it, overall, it, it just continues to be kind of a, an ongoing uh, maintenance problem to deal with. So with VC Package, it's a surprise that's out in the open. It's very active, uh, and we're going in the direction of trying to really solve all the uh, common problems that uh, you run into when you're managing C and C++ dependencies. And specifically, if we're going to talk about what VC Package can do for you, um, first of all, VC Package builds libraries from source. This has been a defining characteristic for the product from the beginning. We often get asked, why don't we just provide pre-built binaries the way some other package managers like NuGet, for example, uh, do? And the reason for that is that there are a lot of different ways you can actually build uh, C and C++ libraries, and most of them will not work for your particular project. But that's actually not even the biggest problem. The biggest problem is when you're dealing with, uh, let's say, a more complex dependency graph, and you have dependencies of dependencies, and some of those dependencies have shared dependencies upstream, and you have to deal with things like version conflicts. And how do you how do you resolve that? Well, if uh, library A depends on one version of boost and library B depends on a different version of boost, you have a problem and, and that's something that you have to resolve. Um, if you're not using uh, a, lang a language package manager, you have to kind of resolve that yourself and figure out, okay, what version of boost can I use? What version of these other libraries can I use? How do I install all the different libraries that I need in such a way that uh, when I compile it all together and link them in uh, into my uh, project, I don't have any problems. and and this is the kind of uh, headache that people run into. And one of the biggest reasons I think that people are saying dependency management is such a pain for C and C++. Um, so VC package kind of solves that for you. Uh, the way it works with uh, our big public catalog is all of these uh, libraries are actually compiled together as part of a continuous integration process. In fact, anytime somebody wants to update uh, the catalog by maybe introducing a new library or updating an existing library, what we do is we actually uh, force the whole thing to build at once and make sure that all the libraries work together. And what this means uh, is that if I say I want some five libraries out of the 1600, I can expect them to just work with each other out of the box without me having to do any additional configuration, without me having to change the way they are compiled or changing versions or, or fiddling with them and trying to, uh, to solve different problems that would otherwise be coming up. And the way we describe this is the whole catalog is like a version set of all these libraries. Now, there is a downside to that, which is that um, you're not actually, uh, you, you don't have the flexibility of being able to say, I want this version of a particular library and this other version of a particular library. You kind of have to live with whatever VC package is currently providing, uh, which is usually like the latest or closest or close to the latest acceptable version that compiles with everything else. Uh, but I will talk about more uh, about that versioning uh, problem sh uh, shortly. Uh, but other things that you can do. Um, so when you um, uh, acquire dependencies, oftentimes dependencies have uh, dependencies of their own. And sometimes those dependencies have their own dependencies. And you think you're going to install three dependencies and you end up installing nine dependencies. And that's not... Um, if you're doing this manually uh, and building everything one at a time and going to individual GitHub repos to figure out the build instructions for each thing, seeing if it works for your build system, seeing if it works for your OS, that's not fun. Uh, well, VC Package solves all that for you. You can just tell it, okay, I want these three libraries, and then it will also install their own dependencies upstream so that uh, although you just have to say you want those libraries, all of those like upstream ones also get set up for you, so it'll just work. And again, I, I talked about the version set thing. So the version conflicts, that, that whole thing is, uh, that whole problem is avoided, which is really nice. And we have, uh, in particular, some really good integration with MS Build and CMake uh, build systems. Although you can use it with other build systems as well, um, but we do have some additional features that work uh, for MS Build and CMake, and I'll be talking a little bit about that as well. And again, easy to use. This is the key. We want to make it extremely easy. When you go into, you, when you install a set of libraries, it's essentially as easy as going into the terminal and saying VC package install, and then you list a bunch of libraries. Uh, maybe you might also specify how you want those libraries to be compiled if you want it to be something other than the default. So you might say, well, I want x64 windows of this library, or, or here is a custom build configuration uh, for something special that I made. You can create your own as well. 
So that's that's kind of how how it all works. And this is kind of like the basics of, of using VC package. But we have been investing a lot into improving the tool. We've uh, added a lot to it since we got started with the project back in 2016. Uh, of course, the size of the catalog was the biggest, most obvious uh, change over the years. But more recently, we kind of took a step back and thought, OK, we've been really increasing the size of that catalog. And at this point, we, we've covered many of the major libraries that people want. But are there features in the tool itself that we can add to to make this uh, to make the experience even better? And yes, the answer is absolutely we can. And I'm going to go through them right now. The first of these is something called binary caching. Binary caching um, solves one of the problems that may come up with, with the fact that your VC package builds libraries from source. So building libraries from source is good because it gives you the flexibility of building libraries in a way that actually will work for you. So you're not downloading some random pre-built library that may or may not work depending on your, your uh, particular build graph or your or whatever uh, build configurations you require, whatever compiler flags and other stuff. Um, so building, you, we want to be able to build from source at least once to be able to get that, that dependency graph set up nicely. And then once you have that, then you're good. Well, binary caching essentially allows you to do that exactly once and only once, unless you're you're making changes to the build requirements uh, in the future. Um, and essentially allows you to just cache those uh, dependencies somewhere or uh, the binaries of those dependencies somewhere and then be able to restore them uh, as you need them. So you the very first time you install a library of VC package by default uh, right now in the, the tool, um, you it will go through and build from source and then it will cache them somewhere. And you can change the location where these binaries get cached. Uh, by default, it's going to be like on the same machine, but you can change that. So you could, for example, point to some file share or some other machine on your network or some some on premises machine that in your in, uh, in your organization that you have access to and have every all the caching going on there or you can cache it in uh, one of the popular cloud uh, storage solutions so for example you can use something like github packages um, to, to store uh, your uh, cache binaries you can use azure devops artifacts you can use azure blob storage you don't have to use microsoft cloud you can use google cloud as well um, and in fact you can use any nuget package feed because we do support nuget as a, a package format on the back end uh, so anything that's that, that acts as a nuget package feed you can use with binary caching now this doesn't mean you can then pull those binaries and integrate them into some ms build project like by adding them as references uh in visual studio that, that this is a different kind of nuget integration that we're talking about it's not using the nuget tool itself it's using vc package uh, but the package format is the same which allows us to just be able to reuse those feeds without having to come up with completely new feeds that actually, that would support vc package so that's kind of the the thought process there and the benefit of, of binary caching is let's say you need to nuke your machine start over um the second time you install everything it, it happens in, in the span of a few seconds it just downloads all the binaries and the sources. You, you no longer need to rebuild everything. Or say, for example, you want your development machine and your continuous integration environment to match. No problem. This is doable uh, with uh, uh, binary caching. And you you might have to go through the build from source once on your local development machine. Then when you switch to CI, assuming it knows about this back end, it'll just pull it from there. And anytime a, a VC package is requesting to uh, install packages, it will check the cache, see if valid packages already exist that match the, the uh, build requirements that you have, and it will just restore those if possible. Otherwise, it will just update the cache with new packages that it builds uh, on the fly at that moment. And so that's basically how, how binary caching works. And this feature has been around for a while, but I wanted to uh, point it out as, as a nice way of, uh, of saving you time, really, um, because time is the most precious resource in the world uh, when it comes to, to uh, dealing with C and C++ dependencies. And in fact, if we go to the ISO C++ surveys, um, I think the number two most uh, uh, common problem that people had was build times. So if you can build less frequently, that's probably a good thing. All right, so second feature is something called manifests. Um, 
this is another feature I'm really excited about and it also ties into the next two features I'll talk about. So that's why I want to talk about it now. Manifests are a way to declare your dependencies in a file. It's, it's a JSON file. It's called vcpackage.json. And you can check that into your source control. So it's really easy to persist the state of what you want your dependency graph to look like for, for your project. Um, now, historically, the way um, you would install libraries with Easy Package, and this is something we now call classic mode. You can continue doing this where we'll continue to support classic mode. We have nothing against it. It works great. But uh, the problem with it is that you have to kind of go into the terminal and say things like, okay, VC package install boost and uh, rapid JSON and open SSL and all these other things. And if you have to do that manually, that's not always fun, especially if you have to do it multiple times in different environments. Um, some people get around it by writing something like a shell script, which you can just run, and then it will go ahead and execute a bunch of VC package commands and set up an environment. But then you have to maintain that script. Somebody has to write the script. Manifests are a way of just bypassing that altogether. You just write your dependencies in the manifest and just let VC package go from there. You can actually just say VC package install with no other arguments um, as long as you're in the folder where, which contains a manifest and it will go ahead, it will read the manifest and it will do everything uh, to, to get everything set up at that point. Now manifest mode does work a little bit differently than classic mode in the sense that with classic mode, uh, libraries get installed in a subfolder of the VC package installation directory. With manifest, they actually get installed in the subfolder of your project, wherever that VC package.json exists. In fact, there's a there's a file or sorry, a folder that's called VC package underscore installed. And under there, you will find uh, the sources and the binaries. That's where they'll go. So that allows you to kind of keep everything with your project, which is nice. So you have your manifest, which declares your dependencies, and you have your actual dependencies themselves, which live with your project. Um, and I should call out that manifest works specifically for MS Build and CMake. Um, we do want to continue expanding on the support, but those are the two uh, environments that were the two build systems uh, that we currently uh, support. Um, and in terms of using them with these with these build systems with MS Build, you really just have to turn on the project property for using VC Package manifests, uh, and then once you've done that, um, it will just work. Whenever you do a build in MS Build. It will actually first uh, check with VC package if any uh, packages need to be restored. It will go ahead and do that, and then it will go ahead and, and build your actual uh, uh, project. With CMake, um, it's also pretty straightforward. So, uh, as a general rule, in in general, when you're using VC package with, with CMake, there's a CMake toolchain file that we provide with VC package. You have to make sure you you link that into your to your CMake. Um, and uh, as long as you've done that, then it's simply a matter of being able to just reference the individual packages in your cmakelist.txt files. Uh, usually that's just saying find package and then the name of it. And then you have a target link libraries uh, function as well uh, and, and, and uh, list your libraries there. Uh, some, some libraries might not necessarily support cmake and then you might have uh, another extra step or maybe you have to point to like the include pass and um, and where the libraries are, but it, it's really just like adding an extra line or two. Um, but basically what I'm trying to say here is we're just using existing CMake mechanisms for finding stuff, and then it should just work. And the benefit then is once you have uh, this set up with, with CMake, when you run CMake configure to generate the cache, it will, again, it will invoke VC package. It will basically run VC package install with no parameters. So we will look at the VC package.json and just set everything up. So that's that's basically how that works. Um, since VC package.json is something you can easily check into your source control, it makes it really easy to maintain consistency across uh, your development team, making sure everybody installs the correct things. You can specify what you want and persist it in a way so that um, you don't have people installing the wrong dependencies. Um, and you don't have inconsistencies for, uh, as well between your development environment and your continuous integration environment because you presumably want consistent reproducible builds. And this was a way to ensure that. Um, one other thing I want to call out about VC package.json, um, if you are uh, contributing to the VC package project, you will care about VC package.json as well. Because in fact, 
Uh, this is uh, used to specify metadata about libraries that will be consumed with VC package. So we have something called a control file that we've used in the past. This is now deprecated. We're using VC package.json to also like identify libraries that will be part of the VC package catalog. Um, so just to identify things like, okay, what dependencies do those libraries have? And um, just uh, so that this is just information that VC package can then leverage uh, by consumers of VC package. So it has all the information about all the libraries and the overall build graph. So I'm not going to go too much into that, but that's something you can find out more about if you uh, go through our documentation. And this is just a basic example of what a VC package adjacent file looks like. Um, there is a, a name kind of for the project that uh, 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 corresponds to uh, this uh, VC package adjacent. So that's the project you're, you're specifically working in, uh, and as well as a version for it. A version string is actually mostly used. Um, you can basically put anything you want if you're consuming libraries of VC package, but if you're producing libraries, then that was actually like the version for the for the library you're producing. And then what are the dependencies that you need? So you basically just list all the libraries you care about and you're good to go. That's that's it. It's like running VC package install, CXX, opts, FMT, and range v3. Uh, but this is just specified in that file. Okay, and then if you have like a, if you're doing it on CMake again, CMakeList.txt, you can just say find package for all the different packages, uh, and you have a target link libraries line at the bottom as well, which uh, sets everything up. And then everything should just work. You run CMake configure, it invokes VC package behind the scenes. You don't have to do any additional work. VC package will be active and being used uh, as needed to restore your uh, dependencies. Okay, so now for for the first announcement. Um, of this talk, so we 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 had another feature that, that was experimental uh, called versioning, and we're happy to announce that this feature is now generally available. We're considered uh, to, to have moved out of experimental state, uh, so we're very excited about that. This is one of the most popular features we've re, uh, re, we've been requested over the past couple of years. What this lets you do is to lock down on your preferred library versions, so. Remember when I said that VC package, uh, the, the catalog exists as one version set, and the downside is you can't really pick and choose your own versions? Well, actually, I lied. You can. You can use the versioning feature to do that. So by default, if you do nothing, you will still just get whatever version is in that version set, but you absolutely can declare your own uh, versions. So um, you do this in the VC package.json file. It only works with manifest mode. And there are three. Uh, configurations you can make, I guess, as part of that. And I'm just going to quickly call them out. The first is something called built-in baseline. This basically establishes a default version for all the public dependencies. Think of this as the version set that, you, that, that, it, that you're starting off with, right? So if, you, if you're not using versioning, this will just be like whatever the most recent, um, whatever version of, of, of VC package you currently have installed on your machine, it will just be using everything from, uh, from there in that version set. But you can set this to something else. The second thing you, you can set is something called a minimum version. So this is useful if you want to say, well, actually, I want a greater version than my baseline. Uh, I don't want to be just on the baseline. So if you want to say, OK, I want at least this version of library, you would say uh, you would use version uh, greater than or equals um, to say that you want that. And what this will do is it will typically give you exactly that version that you asked for, but it may go a little bit higher if VC package detects that actually your build will not work because there's some incompatibility based on uh, on the version you picked and and you, what your overall build graph looks like. Um, if that is the case, then it will go, it will increment that and it will go to the next higher minor version that it can uh, successfully build. Um, and that's basically how, how that works. So this is, it's kind of like saying, I want this version, but I'm flexible. Like if you, if you need to go a little bit higher, you can do that. But sometimes you might really say, no, you really need to use this specific version. Don't change it. Do exactly, exactly what I tell you. And that's where uh, overrides comes in. So that's uh, that lets you essentially say, I want exactly these versions of these libraries, and, and you can use that. This is particularly useful when you want something that's really uh, like an older version. Um, then even the baseline overrides trumps everything. If you say that you want that, that's what you get. So that's basically how versioning works. This is an example of VC package.json file. It looks essentially the same, except you can see we have version greater than or equals for FMT. So we're saying we want at least that version. We'll typically get that version unless uh, it won't build, and then it might give me like 7.1.4 if that exists. Um, and then Zlib is not uh, 
it doesn't have a version specified, which means that I'm just going to get whatever the default is in that baseline. So you don't have to specify versions for every single dependency, um, but you do need to specify that built-in baseline so that we know exactly like, okay, what is like your, what is your default state? All right, so that's, that's versioning. Um, so then let's talk a little bit about registries. Uh, so registry is another feature. It was experimental. It's now generally available. We're really excited about that. This allows you to bring your own libraries to VC Package. This is a big deal. So VC Package has this public catalog over 1,600 libraries, but you can actually bring your own libraries. Or maybe you can have like a custom fork of an open source library because you don't want the default one. Maybe you have some additional security uh, checks that you need to do. Maybe you you, you did some patching and, and yet that hasn't been pushed upstream yet. Or you just have your own completely private library, completely isolated from the internet or from the open source world anyway, um, that maybe you're using within your organization. That's where you can use registries to, to, to help you. So there's a couple of different configuration files that you can use to set up a registry, but essentially the way this, this works is it's like setting up your own VC package catalog. Okay, you have a baseline that you can set up. You, you can uh, define your, your libraries and the versions. You have a portfile.cmake, which is basically your build recipe. This is, if you've authored uh, libraries for VC package, this is essentially the same thing. And you can specify, okay, what is the type of registry? Is it like a file system registry or is it something that lives in a Git repo somewhere? Um, where does the registry exist and what are the available packages? You still need to use VC package manifest with this or VC package.json. Um, when you're producing libraries for, remember when I said when you produce libraries for VC package, you still need VC package.json for that. You also need that when you're authoring libraries for registries. So that's basically how that works. And that file um, uh, or the, the or one of the files used for, for registries is VC package configuration.json. Um, so I wanted to call this one out because it's a bit different than stuff we've talked about before. So in this case, here we have a registry. It's a, it's a Git registry. So there's actually like a Git repo that you can specify that's under the repository section. Then you can list the packages that correspond to that. So that's basically how that works. All right. So uh, I wanted to say uh, a few things just in general about VC package. So VC package is, is an interesting case of a Microsoft product that from the beginning has been great for open source projects. Like if you have an open source project and you're using um, and you're consuming dependencies, VC package is a great tool for that. And that has been the case from the beginning. What we haven't heard so much is VC package being great for enterprises, which is really weird because it, we're Microsoft. So we're kind of expecting it to be backwards, right? Like, oh, we're great at targeting enterprise, but open source, I don't know. Can we do that? Can we make it work for open source? But since this started off as an open source project and we've been investing so much uh, into it, um, I think the perception from the beginning in the community has been, oh, if you have an open source project, yeah, you should use VC package. So that continues to be the case. We'll continue keeping VC package as a simple solution for C and C++ dependency management with a lot of powerful features. It's also the case, you know, if you're working on small projects, yeah, VC package is, is great for that. Um, it, even if you only need, you know, a couple of dependencies, just being able to save time on building those dependencies yourself, uh, that's worth it. At any time you can save, it's absolutely worth it. But it's also the case that VC package is great for education. I know that we have some um, students that uh, for their coursework, they're required to not use any libraries because using libraries is cheating. You have to write all the code yourself from scratch. We don't really think this is the best model and it doesn't really apply to the real world. Um, when you get when you go and get a, a job as a developer, uh, so hopefully we do see more more students using uh, dependencies to to save a little bit of time and not rewrite things that have already been written many times by people in the past. Um, but VC package is a great tool for for saving time, and we know if you're a student, you're really busy, um, and you want to save time on that uh, on setting everything up. So that's great. But we also want to say that with these four features we've added, VC package is great for professional development. It's great for enterprise developers. Um, that is a statement we want to be able to make. Uh, we we know that you know all all four of these features that I've talked about uh, have been popular requests by people from all across the community, even for for open source projects and and for small projects. But there are a lot of professional developers that have told us. We cannot even start thinking about using VC package until you have these features. Well, now we do have these features. So we want to be able to say, give VC package a, a second look, try it out. Let us know, is this something that works for you? And we're happy to make it better if it's not. Um, but we are really excited that with all the progress we've made. And we do think we have a, a pretty compelling solution now to, uh, to, to managing uh, your dependency needs. 
whether you want to lock down on versions, whether you want to declare stuff in a manifest, whether you want to save time with uh, build uh, with builds, um, VC package is a great tool. And last but not least, we now finally have a VC package website. I'm really excited to announce vcpackage.io. Um, for a long time, we've just been like a, a repo on GitHub. We started off with a small team just working on this as a tool for migrating people to newer versions of Visual Studio. And we've grown way, way past that scale. We're targeting three platforms. We have over 1,600 uh, libraries that we support. And uh, of course, we have these features now that really give you a more compelling solution uh, for, for controlling your dependencies and, and setting up your environment the way you want to. Um, but we also thought, you know what? We need a website. I mean, everybody needs a website, right? So. Please check out vcpackage.io, whether you're new to VC Package or whether uh, you're a VC Package veteran. We have a number of uh, useful things on the website. You can learn about VC Package, of course. You can uh, f uh, follow the Getting Started instructions. We have our documentation there as well. Um, you can actually, uh, let me actually just switch to it. Uh, so this is what the website looks like. Again, it's live right now. I want to specifically call out the packages page. Okay, You can actually browse for packages. So you can actually say, you know, are, do, does VC package have the libraries that I care about in the public catalog? Well, now you can search. You, you can you can just go ahead and, and look for stuff, and you can see exactly what is available. So that's something that um, that can be pretty useful. Like I'm going to use SQLite as an example. You know, we have a couple of different options for SQLite. Um, you might be curious to know what are the options that are available. And if you want to see, okay, how do I actually install this? So assuming you're using classic mode, you know, you can just copy and paste this uh, from here. So it's, it's very, very straightforward. Do check out our website and, and let us know uh, what you think. All right. So um, that's basically it for this talk. Again, if you want to get started with VC Package, check out vcpackage.io, which is now live. Uh, we are always looking for feedback. If you uh, try out VC Package and you find something that doesn't work very well for you, please feel free to interact with us on GitHub. You can file uh, an issue if you find like a bug or something that's just broken, or if you if you want uh, to have new libraries added to the ecosystem, uh, at least to the public catalog. Of course, you can always add your own to a private registry if you want. Um, please go ahead and, and do that. We also have a discussion forum now on our GitHub repo. So if you want just general discussion about VC Package or if you're stuck, you have questions, please feel free to engage with us there. Uh, we're happy to have you. And well, again, I want to thank uh, the uh, VC Package community that has contributed so much to this project and made all of this possible. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much, Augustin. OK, we've got a bunch of questions in chat. Um, if you have any other questions and you're watching on Twitch or on YouTube, please head over to Microsoft Learn TV, which is where you can ask your questions. If you ask questions somewhere else, we won't see them and they won't get answered. So if you want questions answered, go to Learn TV. OK, so one question is, will VC Package be distributed as part of our next, as part of uh, VS 2022? So yes, we are actually working on um, shipping VC package as a binary that can be distributed with Visual Studio as well as Visual Studio code. Um, we do expect that to land in the Visual Studio in Visual Studio 2022. Um, we we've done kind of the, the groundwork for being able to ship it as a binary. There's a bunch of like security stuff and compliance stuff that we have to do. Uh, and right now for those who don't know the way you install VC packages you you have to uh, clone the repo and then you run the bootstrapping script we provide um, to to build it. Um, but we, by being able to distribute it directly as a binary that you can easily download it and get started with, this enables us to, to integrate it with other environments. So we absolutely will be shipping it with Visual Studio. It will be included um, uh, if you're using a, a C++ uh, workload, a Visual Studio code. Um, right now we're thinking we'll, we'll probably have like a separate extension you can install for VC package. Uh, but yeah, we, we are absolutely doing that. Uh, cool. Um... Before I go into the other questions, if you look, if you're on Learn TV and you go into the announcements section, you'll see the um, resources which Augustine just posted. Um, another question is: Is there any plan for VC Package to use custom private repos? I think we answered that with our um, with the talk already. But then there's another question down below, which is: um, Can versioning be used for public libraries, such as for installing a specific Boost version? I think that's something you covered in the the talk as well, right? 
Yeah, so versioning does work with that. Um, you may not be able to get every single old version of a library. If you need uh, something that's not already uh, currently available in the catalog, you may have to set up a custom registry for it. But going forward, we are expecting that every every library that is uh, updated, you'll be able to install any uh, any of the uh, previous versions. So you don't have to worry about, this was another problem people had with, with VC Package was we would update the versions, but people will really wanted to stay on the old version. And then they updated VC Package, and now it's like updating their version. So with versioning, you don't have to do you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, you'd be able to stick uh, to that version. The worst case, if a particular version is not currently provided there, you can set it up in a custom registry. How about um, installing an older version through the command line instead of um, via vcpackage.json? We do not currently have uh, support for that. Um, if you are really, if you feel really strongly about that as a feature, please uh, feel free to start a, a discussion thread with us on, on GitHub. We would love to hear your feedback. Uh, we just prioritized vcpackage.json because we kind of saw that as, as the, the future of, of just managing uh, dependencies of vcpackage. Uh, there, there are a lot of benefits to using vcpackage.json, but we do understand, of course, that you know the classic mode has been around for a while. We will continue, of course, to support it. Um, so yeah, please, please let us know and we, we can have that conversation. Cool. And then on the other side of newer versions, um, what if there's some like publicly available new version, like OpenSSL gets an update, um, but the VC package public repo hasn't been updated to pull down the most recent version, which is available. Um, do we have something to, uh, to help out in that scenario? Yeah, so again, that's something you can set up with a custom registry. Um, so we, we do have a pretty active repo. We do get a lot of PRs uh, with updates to, to libraries. So hopefully we're not, we, we don't, hopefully we don't get too out of date for too long with anything. But if you do really badly need the latest version of a library and it's not currently in VC package, you can always set it up with a registry. Again, like a lot of these features have been set up with flexibility in mind. Um, we recognize that you know the default experience, if you do nothing, might not be flexible enough. Maybe you need to make some changes. With, with uh, things like registries and versioning, you can go in and customize uh, uh, your requirements as much as you want. Cool. And then there's a question about automating patching. Like if we, you have some, um, some custom patches that you want to apply but don't necessarily want to um, like have your own fork of the library. Um, what's the story with BC package there? Um, so, uh, so really like your options are, uh, you, if, if it's like an open source library, you can contribute to the BC package public catalog, and then you can make use of that. And then everybody else in the community can make use of that, or you can set up your own registry, which would require the, doing the additional red leg work of, of figuring out, okay, how do we actually compile this library and, and, and listing it out and listing the available versions and stuff like that. Um, th those are the, the current options that are available. We don't really have anything that's in between that. Um, again, if you, if you have any suggestions for us on how we could improve the experience, please start a discussion with us about it. Cool. Um... And then this question of maintaining in house patches for public libraries. I feel like we've covered that with these answers so far. Yeah, like a lot of the answers, I think, come back, come back to registries. I will also yeah. call out that we are actually working on, on something like this. So um, we're actually working on rolling out VC package across Microsoft. Um, when I say VC package is enterprise ready, I'm not just saying that for for the sake of some marketing messages. Um, we are actually working with a lot of teams across Microsoft to, to set something up. And one of the, the workflows we will have is they're, they're not going to be pulling dependencies directly from the public catalog. They will have like a mirror of it that's controlled and has custom patches and security patches and stuff like that and security checks uh, and passes all the compliance requirements. And that also has uh, like a business continuity in case you know the, the developer behind an open source package removes it one day. You don't want to, everything to just break. Um, so that's a workflow that's being set up uh, using VC package, using versioning, using registries uh, to control uh, the environment. Cool. Um, so next is, is CMake a requirement to create VC packages? Uh, yes. So that's, that's just the workflow that exists today. Uh, it is CMake based. Um, that's that was just a design decision that was made since uh, you know CMake is a very is very popular in C plus plus. 
I know Conan, I think, is more Python-based, um, although I'm not as, uh, I'm certainly not an expert on Conan. Um, so the, uh, the Conan and VC package are kind of the, the most popular options available today. So um, yeah, if you want to author uh, packages, then you, you would have to do it through a CMake way for VC package. Uh, and that's that's what we support today. Again, if you have suggestions for us on alternative ways we could do it, please feel free to start a discussion thread. All right, but your, um, your project build system internally isn't required to be CMake, like you can trigger yes, off yes. some other Correct. build system internally. Yeah. So, so to be, yeah, to be clear, I'm talking about producing libraries with use for VC package. If you're consuming libraries, no, you do not have to be using CMake. Um, can we talk about automated port publishing for libraries which are published via VC package? Things like automated pull requests for opening um, new tagged versions in GitHub. That is a great suggestion, and it is something we've talked about a little bit in the past. Uh, we've been thinking about things like using uh, GitHub Actions to automate uh, some of this. Um, we, we're still in early stages exploring what we could do. Um, we definitely want to 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 continue improving the the process for updating uh, ports. We know we receive a very large volume of PRs, and we 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 spend a lot of time processing all those PRs. So it certainly benefits us as well to be able to automate as much of it as possible. Uh, so we're continuing to work on our CI process and our automation process, um, and just stay tuned. I guess you you should see improvements gradually over time. Great. All right. Well, we're pretty much exactly at time now. So thank you so much, Augustin, for your time and for this talk. I hope you all learned something new about VC Package and how that can help you out. So see you later, Augustin. Thanks for having me.